Hello and welcome to a very special video. We're going to be talking about how to assign uh, different type of resources to different tasks. In this case, we're having, of course, the most important resources, a human being who is going to be doing some uh, task. There are three uh, people and they could possibly be assigned each one of them to a specific task. But the option here, if you notice, uh, the first person could uh, charge, will charge $40 uh, to complete this task, uh, whether it's 40 or 40,000, who cares? But at this moment, it's just to get to see that each one of them is going to have a specific amount uh, 47 for the second task and 80,000 for the third task. Uh, the same thing for person two proposed uh, $72 for task one, this amount for task two, task, task three, and so forth. As you notice here, with the uh, person three wanted to charge. Uh, $24, but his uh, charges for task 3 was a little bit uh, more, uh, 71. It's not more than the first person, but it's significantly more than his ta task 1, also larger than the second person. Regardless of the, co uh, the cost, uh, the cost is going to be a factor in determining the solution for this because uh, the problem is going to be to solve for uh, the total total cost. Total cost, uh, every time we hear the word cost, we should be able to remind ourselves this is something should be minimized if we can. So the uh, profit, in general, we would like to maximize cost, we would like to minimize. So this problem is going to be a minimization problem. So we're going to reduce uh, the, as much as possibly we can the total cost. If you notice here, this area is going to be determine, determining the number of the, uh, uh, or not the number, to be specific, it's going to be, uh, will determine uh, which person is going to be assigned to which task. If you take a look here horizontally, you will see that person one will be assigned to uh, one of these tasks, so, but the total task assigned is going to be subject to the constraint equal one. It's not less than or equal to, not less than, not greater than or equal to, not greater than. It's going to be exactly equal one. So uh, from looking at this, since it's exactly going to be one, there is no way you could choose more than one task for person one. The same thing, exact story applied to person two, the same exact story applied to third uh, person. So in this case, all you're going to have one here or one here and one here, or one here, one here maybe, or one here. As long as there is one per row, we will be in good shape. The same thing for uh, the person assigned. So it's going to be one person assigned per task. So whether we look at it uh, uh, vertically here or horizontally here, we're going to be only allowed to have one value. So in order to assure ourselves, so the sum, to restrict that, so we're going to need the function sum, that the sum of these three, regardless of what they are, is going to be subjected to this constraint, which means equal to 1. So this is not going to be 0, not going to be less than 1. It has to be 1 in order to find the optimal solution. Same thing for this and the same for this. Uh, looking at this one here also, the total of those must be equal to 1 in order for the solution to be uh, feasible or uh, optimal is a better word here. So we're going to go ahead and also use the sum and immediately I'm going to use the fill handle to drag it. One thing I need to expose you before I show you the solution for this. Uh, I'm going to be using the conven convention of names. Uh, let me see first if I have any name that I have defined earlier. Obviously, I did, so I'm going to delete all of them quickly to show you uh, uh, how we're going to apply this. Sorry about the noise. I'm sorry about not deleting this earlier before I start the video, but that's something we could learn from it also as well. So what I want to do here is the fact that <coughs> this... Uh, before I do this, if I have a cell, uh, for example, this 80 or 90, and I want to name this uh, cell by the name grade. So I could go ahead and call it here grade in this area and hit enter. From now on, this cell is going to be great. For example, if I say here uh, grade divided by 3, so it's going to be 30. How do I come up with the name grade? It has to be meaningful name. 
It must start with a letter. It cannot have a space. It should not have a special characters except the underscore to actually make it a meaningful. Or better yet, you should be able to use what we call the capital K set to, know, to name your variable. For example, if I have an area of circle, uh, go ahead and capitalize the first letter from the second word and capitalize the first letter from the third word. So as you notice here, area of a circle. If I say here, a volume of a cube, so it's good to be able to see that. I'm capitalizing the O and the C in the cube and so forth. No space. Uh, meaningful name. Uh, don't use any of those function names that we use typically with Excel, like some I original uh, built-in function. Uh, make sure uh, you don't have uh, what we call special characters. Uh, but if you really wanted to have, uh, uh, as long as you start with a letter, you want to have a digit at the end of it, that's no problem. For example, if you want to say area one, that's perfectly okay. If you want to say here range one, that's perfectly okay as well. Let's go ahead and test a, these and see how we're going to play with this because I want to name those areas with a meaningful name. If I have these five uh, uh, values, and I want to call these values, uh, these five of them, I'm going to call it, uh, let's say, set one. See here, I'm actually starting with the, the letter S, and I ended up with the digit one. So now if I say here, sum uh, set one, between two parentheses is going to give me the sum of all these. And notice if I get another one here, okay, another set, could be larger than five, but I'm going to stick with five. Uh, you could go ahead and name that, let's say set two. Okay, now we have two ranges with two different names. If I start by saying here average, average, uh, open parentheses, set two, see here, it will highlight, as you notice, the set to area, and it's going to give me the average for the five of them. So I don't have to say uh, average uh, uh, between M3 through M6. All right. Also, anything that we have used in Excel for, it can be used with uh, averages. For example, if I say if an average is sum all that, if I say here if sum <coughs> of set one is greater than uh, sum of set two then we'll say here set one obviously is bigger than set two uh, otherwise it's going to be set between two quotes sorry double quotes i will say here set two obviously is greater than set one so in this case i don't know what would be the answer so in this case uh, let me see if i miss uh, yes i missed the double quotes here Okay, I'll say, okay, here we go. I need to put the double quote right here and take it out of here. So Excel was trying to just uh, suggest for me something and it was the wrong way. Here we go. So we ended up with set uh, two is bigger than set uh, one. If I change this to say something that we could make this uh, notice, here we go. Set two is bigger than set one. If I change this here, notice this is gonna change and so forth. So now we know how to name something. If I take a look at the formula name manager, I will be able to see that the three, the grade that I initially started with, set one and set two. Let me go ahead and delete those because I don't need them anymore. Uh, but <clears throat> you could leave them, so they're not going to hurt anything. The only thing I want you to know that I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete everything. Of course, when you delete the name, it, Excel would have no clue what, what these words stand for. So here I'm going to go ahead and assign the whole thing for cost. This is basically the cost. And now if I say sum cost, it's going to sum all these variables. So basically this is going to help us. And this is going to be assignment. <laughs> okay. And this is going to be the task assigned. Okay. Here we go. All this range task. Uh, task assigned. I'm going to use the camel casing. And this is going to be the supply. Okay, there we go. Supply. And this is going to be person assigned. There we go. Will be help us 
when we set that into solver model and this is going to be the demand you know so we understand that uh, uh, the definition of economics in general is really how to handle scarcity in order to meet our wants and need so basically the demand and the supply uh, in this specific problem should be equal to each other to find the optimal decision. And this one here, I'm going to be actually calling it total total cost. So this is the cell or the objective function that we wanted to, which is going to be uh, some product of, I don't have even to select the ranges cost, okay, comma, multiplied by the assignment. So notice that cost is the blue area and that assignment is the yellow area. And that is really my objective function that the model is going to, to uh, minimize for me. Uh, notice also those are sum here for the sum of this uh, three values uh, vertically. Uh, the same thing, and here we go. The same thing here, the same thing here. And those are the sum of those uh, uh, horizontally so all of them must be equal to one again one more time that constraint must be equal to there's no option to be less or greater or any of that except equal to the same thing for this one here the person assigned resulted from the sum of these three values must be one eventually in order to get the optimal solution let's go ahead and do some trial and error and see how the uh, setup is going to respond to us remember I cannot have more than one task uh, per, per one person. So if I chose this one here to be one, then I cannot choose this or this one. So we already chose one and completed. If I chose this to be one, task two, then that's fine. Uh, as long as I don't choose any other one here or here. Uh, in this case, since those already been chosen, the only option left for me is to choose this one here. And in this case, as you notice, the total cost, if I chose this uh, diagonal, uh, you know, for uh, uh, assign the task to a different person, we're going to get uh, one hundred forty-two dollar. Other option might be remember the cost is going to be uh, based. Uh, this total here uh, cost is all the the whole blue area multiplied by the uh, yellow area. So it's really counting uh, based on the values of the cost that we are charged. When this is equal to one, of course, it's going to be multiplied by this seventy-one. Is going to multiply by this 36 uh, uh, and add it to the 71, and this is going to be multiplied by the 40. That's how we got the 147. Uh, if I change my mind about this, so of course, without uh, having the model, I'm free to make all sorts of mistakes by you know having this two and having this two. That's completely unacceptable because this is, has to be one in order to. Uh, uh, maintain the what do you call it the constraints so this is in this case must be zero and this is of course must be zero if the option is the other diagonal uh, let's see what we're going to end up with it's going to be 140 so this option is better than the previous one but i'm not going to continue to go ahead and guess all night long in order to come up with this uh best possible total cost which is based on minimization uh, let's go ahead and find that through solver Okay, so whether I have all these zeros or I don't have, uh, you know, I even I left those as what it is, it doesn't matter. It's still going to choose the best possible option. I'll start by selecting the objective uh, uh, function cell. Go to the data. There's always going to start with this one here. And notice immediately started with total cost, which is here. And this function is not maximum, it's minimum. I'm going to delete those in order to really show you how to set it up. Because uh, I was playing with it before I recorded this video. Uh, trying to minimize the error. And even I do play sometimes two or three times with it. I still have mistake as you notice. So practice is the only way. Okay, so this is the constraint. Uh, this one here, as you notice, we're going to add this here. Three of them is going to be equal to three of them. I could put them individually, but that would be really a lengthy process needlessly because they all have the same, uh, what we call, uh, sign. So we could, we could go ahead and add it since we have other options. Also, those three here uh, should be equal to these three, uh, which 
the, you're going to see the name eventually, so which is going to be really nice. Since uh, if I don't name them here, I, I, actually I did name them, but you will see it. Even though I'm scanning now with cell address, but later in the model you're going to see the name like task assign supply. So that will remind you of all this. Also, these here must be binary. We cannot have two or less than zero. It's going to be either one or zero. That's what a binary value is, on or off, yes or no. So we're going to change this to equal binary. So we understand all these options when the model is trying to find the best solution. It's going to be based on zero or one. And here we go. We're going to say OK, because we're done. Notice what I was saying earlier, that the name is going to change to or the range is going to change to the name that I selected whether here or here and here and here. Uh, make sure that the unconstrained variable is non-negative, which is we don't have negative, so we have to check it. And make sure that the solving method in this case is a simple linear uh, uh, programming. And I'm going to go ahead and click solve immediately. Solve it. Obviously, it's find an optimal solution. Let's take a look at what it is. And in this case, it found me 108, okay, based on the solution that we find here, 108, okay. So basically, this is 1, 1, 1. And I don't know how I did do the calculation or the iteration, but task 1 should be uh, task 2. Task 1 should be applied to person 1. That's to apply to person two and that's to apply to person three. Uh, let me go ahead and do, make sure that everything is being done here because I never had this low price even with my practice. So let me see here. That's why there is nothing perfect and that's when you get lack of perfection, which is good. We're going to get the best possible outcome here. And let me see if that's going to give me here. Yeah, it gave me 108 and uh, noticing that this is and this and this satisfied this and this and this and this oh here probably the, uh, I noticed now by accident I changed task 1 from 1 to 40 and that is actually what reduced the total cost because it picked up task 1 immediately obviously I have to run it one more time uh, if I recall this was 40 so let me go ahead and run it one more time uh, somehow I deleted it or I type one instead of 40. I'm going to run it again to see what would be the best option. There we go. That's what more like it. That's what I got two or three times earlier. So task two is going to be based on the fact that this is 40. If you recall, if you rewind the videos or actually look at it earlier, it wasn't one. And here we go. Task uh, the three will be assigned to person, person two. And task one is going to be assigned to person person three. I'm not going to really change or cut that mistake. Let it be there so you could learn from it. Uh, if something starts to look suspicious, uh, maybe you should look at your data. If you by accident you have changed it or modified it as I did myself. I hope you learned something from this. Here is Dr. Hijazi. I wish you a wonderful time uh, practicing with assignment problem. This is something going to be helpful for you as a decision maker in the future, whether you're an economic economist or are you going to be a managerial uh, decision maker or any sort of uh, decision that you will be applicable applying in your future knowing that uh, allocating resources is a huge part of our daily activity. Thanks again.